Hey, this is Lance from Langchain. We've been doing a few videos about more advanced line graph concepts, and I want to talk today about subgraphs. So subgraphs are a way to break up complex kind of graphs into smaller substeps. And the key point is that each of those kind of substeps or subgraphs can have their own uh, their own state. So let's take an example of like, let's say you had a multi-agent uh, graph and each of your agents, you want to have independent state. You want to isolate that state per agent. This is a great kind of example or use case for subgraphs. So here's like a toy example. Let's say I had like a node that branched out into two different subgraphs and you can see each subgraph basically inherits state from that parent node but it also has its own state. So subgraph one has its own little hello world state and two has fizz buzz, right? That's the overall idea. Um, this falls within the general kind of theme of controllability. We talked about parallelization. We talked about MapReduce. Subgraphs are kind of another mechanism of controllability when you're building graphs. So let's kind of cover a toy example. And I want to actually talk through kind of this information transfer. Um, between the different components in, in slightly more explicit terms. So let's say I had this toy uh, graph that processed logs, okay? These could be logs from some kind of observability system, right? And I have some entry graph. Now in this entry graph, I grab those logs and I save it to some state that's called docs, okay? And I have two subgraphs, one that will summarize what's in those logs and the other that will provide some kind of failure analysis. Like if there's any mistakes in the logs, it'll, it'll summarize them, right? Now, what's nice is these subgraphs are basically nodes within my entry graph or in my overall, what we might call the parent graph, and they can inherit the state from the parent. So this is a key point when I was kind of covering this initially confused me a little bit. So basically, I define my parent graph, which is this entry graph. These summarization and failure node and failure analysis are subgraphs that are kind of defined as nodes within the parent, and they can inherit state from the parent. And so all I need to do is in each of these subgraphs in their kind of subgraph state, I just define docs, which is automatically kind of inherited from the parent. So that's really convenient. So I can work with it. And that's how I can transfer information from my kind of parent graph, in this case, the entry graph, into each of my subgraphs. So each of those have access to docs. They can do their own thing on them. Each of them have their kind of own independent like states in here, summary, failures, right? Those are states that are kind of private to the subgraph. <clears throat> and they're gonna write out a summary report and a failure report. Now, what's nice is all I need to do is simply specify these in my parent state that then they will be accessible in my parent graph when I finish. So basically, uh, you know, when I kind of set this up up front, I say, okay, here's the things I'm gonna want to have access to from my subgraphs. I make those a part of my kind of overall parent graph state. And by the end, once these subgraphs run, it'll be present and populated so I can just access it. So that's really it. So when I finish, I'm gonna access the summary report and the failure report. So that's really it. Now let's actually see this in code. So I'll copy over this to a fresh, to a fresh notebook. And what you're gonna see is, so this is just kind of, we're defining the structure of our logs. This is just, you know, a toy example here. Uh, so let's imagine these are logs from some kind of question answer system. They contain questions, docs, answers, and grades and feedback, right? <clears throat> so here's my failure analysis subgraph. Let's just define those first. So it's gonna have docs like we kind of showed before. It'll have failures, it'll have some failure analysis summary, right? And it has some nodes and this can be whatever I want. Get failures, generate the summary. This is just a placeholder, of course, right? I have my graph builder, it's super simple. It just basically takes in that state, it adds the nodes, it creates an entry point and, finish, and uh, adds one edge and finishes. Summarization subgraph is similar, I define my state. Again, docs is inherited from the parent. It has some kind of independent uh, or kind of like private state within the subgraph and then it has this report, okay? So there we go. We can just define those two subgraphs and we have builders for each of those. So that's really all we need, done there. Now, uh, what we're gonna do is, we're just gonna kind of copy over here. So here's some like dummy logs I'm gonna process. Now here's my parent or entry graph. Now you can see this docs, let's go back to our kind of diagram here. This docs is what I'm gonna pass through to the subgraph. So docs is basically defined in my overall graph state. And you can see it was also specified in the subgraph states here and right here. 
So this docs is what I'm going to transfer through to the subgraphs. That's cool. Now we're going to see here, and I comment it right right here, failure and failure FA summary and report are going to be populated or generated by our subgraphs, and they're going to be basically it will be present or available to us in this overall parent graph state once the subgraphs run. So basically, all I'm doing here is I'm basically adding placeholder state variables for what I want to get back from my subgraphs. That's really it. And we can go back and look. So failure, failure analysis summary is defined um, right up here in my failure analysis subgraph. And then the report is defined in my summarization subgraph. So that's it. And this is just some other little things. Now let's actually just kind of run this and we can see it. So this is kind of cool. I, when I see the graph laid out, I can see everything. So here's kind of my parent. I'm converting the logs to docs. And you know, this could be some operation where you go from raw logs, it's like kind of structured, uh, kind of structured logs per some schema. You then route those to each of your subgraphs. So subgraphs run and then you end. And when you end in your overall kind of parent state, you're going to have access to the failure analysis summary in the report. That's exactly what you want. Uh, and so we can go all the way down and we can just go ahead and run this and I'll just, you know, send in some dummy logs. And here we go. So you can see uh, we basically kind of show the state as it runs. And what we can see here is um, our failure analysis summary and the report are returned when we invoke the graph because they're present in our overall parent state right here. So each of the subgraphs ran, produced the failure analysis summary in the report, which is present to us um, in the, the final uh, state of the parent once everything runs. And so that's really it. Subgraphs are really convenient. Often you're building like, more complex systems that you want to kind of encapsulate different sub processes with, its own, with their own state. Um, this is obviously really useful, and we see many, many different teams do this uh, when building kind of larger agentic systems. And this is just a toy example showing you how everything fits together. So I do want to interject here and just show quickly that LangGraph actually works really nicely with LangSmith. And for applications like this, when I have different subgraphs, it's actually really nice to be able to go to LangSmith and, to, for example, to dig into what's happening within each subgraph. So I've logged to my default project RLM within LangSmith. Here's the trace we've been working on. And so you can see, convert logs to docs. That's kind of our starting point if you look at our diagram. So there we go. And here are the two subgraphs. So failure analysis, question summarization. So basically, if I click on this convert logs to docs, I can see the input and the output from this particular step. So that's great. And what I can do is I can basically open up the subgraph. And I can see the input and output of the overall subgraph, which is great. And I can actually open that up. I can look at the individual steps. So get failures, generate summary. Likewise, with question summarization, I can look at the individual steps. Um, I can dig into each step. I can look at the inputs and outputs. And of course, in the real, in the kind of a realistic case, these steps could involve kind of more involved calls, which you may want to debug. Um, of course, I get useful information about kind of token usage, in this case, zero tokens for this particular part of the graph. Uh, zero tokens overall, I don't make LLM calls here, but latency uh, as well as token usage will be provided for you. So again, Langsmith is very useful for auditing the graphs that you're running, in particular if you have a larger uh, overall graph that incorporates multiple subgraphs.